This is Tapu7 with a space update. And looking here at incoming objects, we have 2017 BH30, which is going to pass our planet here today very close. And then we have another one, a larger one, that's going to come in at about 1 LD. Now, 1 LD uh, in a couple other objects that have come within that range here recently, that's uh, not too close, so to speak, when these objects aren't that large. But when you start to get bigger objects coming in closer, you have to definitely pay attention. What concerns me about this is it's not every day that you see an object come within a tenth of a lunar distance. That's literally shaving the Earth. Because 1 LD is from here to the moon. That's 384,000, I think 401 kilometers. It's the distance between Earth and the moon. Now, 1 LD is also equivalent to 0 0.002 AU, or 00256 AU. Okay, so there's a massive dis difference in measurement. So when we're looking at this chart, we're looking how close this thing comes, and it goes into the negative numbers. It doesn't mean impact. It means that it's, it's actually an LD, and I wish that it would just convert over, but... It's only, you're only dealing with LD in terms of our planet because LD is the distance, once again, from Earth to our moon. And they wouldn't, so to speak, be using that in other uh, areas like Mars or Saturn or Jupiter with their own moons and measurements and everything else. They, they're using AU on a broader scale. And you, you can see here, when I zoom in, this object comes extremely close, and I already went past them. I'll take you through the motion here. You can see it goes right past us. Really wish this zoomed in close enough where we could see the moon, and we could see this thing passing, you know, directly where it's passing. But this one comes so close that it's worth noting because literally it disappears in the frame, and at 4.0e, negative 4 AU, like I said, that's around a tenth of an LD. So imagine from here to the moon, just a tenth of that distance. It literally coming in right above our atmosphere. It's when they come in this close, you have to pay attention because gravity could pull them in the next time around. I mean, we don't know too much about this. They just discovered this object, and there's all kinds of different objects out there. All kinds, different sizes. But it's in my opinion, they will not tell us, like, deep impact. If there was an ELE, extinction level event, they would not tell us to the last minute. And um, that's it. So I really feel it's on the people to keep their eyes peeled at all times as to what's going on all the way around. And uh, this doesn't look to be a substantial threat. But, I mean, who am I to say... I don't know if, the, if an object of this size, if it came and hit the Gulf of Mexico, if it still wouldn't kick up a few feet of tsunami waves, or if it hit the ground, if it really wouldn't do some destruction, or, um, or minimal, you know. Obviously, the smaller the object, chances are it's going to break up in the atmosphere and be very, very small by the time it hits the water or the ground. But depending on how it comes in, what it's made of, um, those are the key things, but I just wanted to bring some attention to it. It's been some time since I did a space update and, uh, here recently I talked about an object they're tracking that they, they don't know what to call it. They don't know whether to say it's an asteroid or a comet because it doesn't have the dust cloud or the tails of a comet it has the size. It, then that's why they want to call it a comet, but it doesn't have, it would, it would be a massive asteroid, but it, it's a dark object that doesn't reflect much light when the sun hits it, and it's kind of a mystery making its way in. So, with so much mystery out there and objects floating around, it, to me, who's to say that any given rock can't smack another rock at any given time or knock something out of orbit? I mean, I believe this is why we see fireballs when we do, and a lot more happen than people realize because they happen more than what people catch on dash cam and everything else. Let's just hope that the next Shelly Binks type of event happens 
out in a remote region. And not over a city where there's massive destruction. And, hey, that's a perfect example. They were watching Apophis, which is another one that you got to watch out for. Here in, like, 2032. Time's ticking. 2020 is going to be on the doorstep. These things coming back around. There's a very real possibility of an impact at some point by some object. I believe it's going to happen. Not a question of if, but when. Obviously. And we hope not in our lifetimes, but it would be in your kids' lifetimes. If not, you, there has to be a plan. You have to prepare. How do you prepare for an ELE? I mean, there's different levels, obviously, to the devastation that can be caused from these objects incoming. But um, a new one like this, they just discover coming so close next time around, it could come closer. And I just wanted to give the heads up because uh, that is an extremely close encounter. If we do end up hearing that there was a massive fireball out there anywhere, it'd be interesting uh, to see if we could somehow track it down if, if it was that object. When we have another larger object coming in at 1 LD here on the 31st, and it looks like some time's going to pass here before any other ones come any closer that they know of. But you see, I say that, and when you look at this chart, you could come back in a couple of days, the next thing you know, you could see a 0.5 or a 0.4, like right in here somewhere, because they just discovered it coming in. And those are the ones you have to pay attention to. So, that's the latest here with the space update. Just want to let folks know. And if you're over here trying to look at the orbit diagram, you might want to use Firefox or Internet Explorer because Chrome quit operating with this system for whatever reason. They tell you it will not work. And you have to make the download over here on Internet Explorer or Firefox to be able to get it to work right. So, just a little bit of info there for you if you're trying to get over to the chart and it's not working for you over on, on Chrome. But this is a good one, JPL database here, uh, when wanting to track these objects, where they're coming from, where they're going, all that good stuff. I will continue to update with more as I come across it. And until next time, this has been Dabu7, the space update. Eyes to the skies.